But one of the things that we had to do in order to run this new engine in this car is we had to install an electrical fuel pump. So I have found about the only spot in this tank that I could fit an electrical fuel pump and have installed this electric fuel pump in this tank. Um, I have taken this breather side off and have just put a hose between the two breathers. I need to come in here and plug off this original fuel outlet line as well as this original return line. Since this engine is a pulse width modulated fuel pump, which means it does not have a return line, it uses pulse width modulation in order to control fuel pressure. I have installed a cap on the return line to this fuel pump. We do have this fuel tank breather line that will go up and go to the EVAP canister um, where we will hook up the EVAP canister to the engine and so that we can use it as the 2014 car was designed. So originally, the line coming into this high pressure fuel pump came up and out this side right here. I have a lot of stuff on this side, so I don't really like the way that that fuel line would be over here. So my plan is to run this fuel line over to this other side. So I have a piece ordered that is going to allow me to connect to this high pressure fuel pump and run my line out this other side. Now, the way we remove this fuel line from that high pressure pump, if you look inside of here, it has some little tabs that lock it into place. They slip up over the fuel line and they go over this bevel right here. Now, to get this fuel line off, what we do is we slip our tool up over our fuel line like this, and then we push that up into this piece right here, and it will snap those little tabs out and allow us to remove this fuel line. I have built a wiring harness that is going to come from the engine control module and the fuel pump control module and it's going to go back through the car and back to the fuel tank in the back of the car. I have wiring in this harness. I have the three wires that we are going to use for our fuel pressure sensor which I am going to mount in the back of the car near the fuel tank. And I have the control wires for the fuel pump, including a shielding wire that goes w along with this harness. Now, this shielding wire will be cut blunt at that end and will be hooked into the fuel pump control module on this end. And I have loosely braided these wires together so that the shield will shield the amperage running through this from creating disturbance electrically inside of the car. So after I put all of these wires together, I took a sleeve and installed it over the top of the wiring to keep all of the wiring together and to give it a little bit of protection. Now at the ends of this wiring harness, I have put some heat shrink that I will run partway onto the shield and partway onto the wires. Then I will heat this up and it will shrink down and keep these wires and this harness protector where they're supposed to be. Um, I am going to add some more of this wire loom to this section as soon as I determine how long this needs to be and hook up my fuel pump. So I have installed this fuel pump into this existing tank and I am going to go ahead and 
build me a connection into the car so that this tank can become a little easier to remove. Well, so what I've done is I've built me a short harness that will come out on the passenger side of the car up above the exhaust system, above the frame. And we will also use the fuel pressure line as well as the fuel vent line to run to the front of the car. And I will have connections up in the car. I'll show you that in just a second. And I am going to utilize the original fuel level gauge. And so we will go ahead and it will run to the original dash. Um, we are going to incorporate some of the original gauges and are going to switch some of them. So this is where I'm going to put my connection for all for both of my fuel lines as well as for my fuel pump control. Now this fuel pump control has a third wire. This is a shielding wire. GM wants us to have a shielding wire to run these. So this is going to be loosely braided through the harness. These three wires right here are going to go to my fuel pressure sensor, which is going to mount right here. I have built this little bit of a bracket right here to mount this fuel filter. It will set just like that. And I will build a bracket right here that the fuel pressure sensor will bolt into. And then I will hook this wire up to that fuel pressure sensor. So this is the shielding wire. And these three wires are just loosely braided together like this, all the way through this harness and all the way through the harness going up into the car. Now I have the shielding wire where it dead ends right here. And I am going to make the connections to the fuel pump on this end of this wire. And then we will put the heat shrink right up here to the edge so that we have very limited exposed wiring in the harness. So I have mounted my fuel pump control module right here on this fender. And I've got the computer, engine computer mounted right here. I have over on this side, I have put a rib nut in the frame right here. This will hold my evap charcoal canister and then I'm going to build a bracket that's going to come up from this frame and come up and connect to my fuse block which will set about right in this area right here. I'm going to build a bracket for, for it that will come up and mount to the frame in a couple of spots and then it will also come around and help hold this charcoal canister in place. My pressure fuel line, fuel pressure line, is running right up in here. I've ran it out around this heater blower motor housing and it comes up and across and into the engine where I have mounted it directly to the high pressure fuel pump. And then my evaporative emissions line will run right alongside that and come up to the evap charcoal canister, which will sit right in this area. And that should be about it for my fuel system. Thanks for spending a little time with us here in the man cave. Appreciate you watching our videos. Please hit the like or subscribe buttons and also leave comments. I will try and respond to your comments and leave me ideas for videos and I will try and make them happen.